Hi everyone, my name is Manish Khaliti and today I'll be doing a video on how to use Zoom if you go to university. So let's just go ahead and get started. So I go to UT Austin, so I'll be doing things from the UT Austin side of things. But I'm sure you can find like the equivalent for whatever university you go to. Alright, so I'm just going to type in UT Austin Zoom. And then for me, I have to go to this link right here. It's uh, utexas.zoom.us. And so what you're going to do is you want to click sign in. And so for me, I already signed in, but it's essentially just your university ID and your um, university password. So yeah, that's all it is to get into this page. So let's get our profile. So one thing to note is that I think I have access to um, what the professors can see and what the students can see as well is because I'm a I'm actually a UT tutor, so um, I'll have to use this so I'll have to use this like software to um, basically connect with people so I can tutor them. But the only differences I can really see is that uh, I think professors or like tutors have this uh, department kind of row, while uh, regular students don't. But that doesn't really matter. And but the only important things from uh, this page is this personal meeting ID, this uh, link, and then this email. These two things are only important if you're trying to basically invite someone to join your meeting. So like if you want a group study with them or if you want to um, invite students for office hours or actually have a lecture, you can do it with personal meetings. And Or you can send them this link or this ID, it doesn't really matter. And this email is what you use to basically access your account. So this is uh, directly corresponding to the UT email that I have. So my actual UT email is kolitimanish at utexas.edu. But this is the exact same thing for it. The, it's just like another way that uh, these softwares can know that you're a stu uh, university student. So if we go to the meetings tab, we see these four tabs. But the only things that are really important is this one right here and this one right here. So I'll go into both of them in small detail. So prof for professors, this is probably especially important. You just click schedule a new meeting. Put the topic, description, all that junk, it doesn't really matter. But what's important is these uh, kind of two sections right here. So this is like the logistics, like when, where, what times and all this stuff. And this is probably going to be important to do a recurring meeting. You could do a recurring every week. And uh, yeah, this is just important for lectures and all that stuff. And uh, these things um, don't really matter too much. For me, I actually probably want the setting on right here, but it doesn't really matter. This right here is just to make sure that the people who are trying to get into the your like meeting are actually registered with probably like the UT uh, the UT side of things and all. So for for professors, you probably want these settings right here. You probably want your video on as soon as you join. So as soon as you like you create a meeting, you'll have it with the video on, and it'll start with anyone who joins videos off because you probably don't want to see. All of you like students uh, bedrooms or whatever so yeah that's just that and uh, just kind of go through this these things don't really matter too much you can go to it with more detail if you want and now let's go to the settings so this is the exact same thing as I showed before so I'm gonna skip over it and these are just settings that the, the professor should go through because this is not really for students themselves because or unless Unless you're a student and you're making a personal meeting, then yeah, this stuff is important to go through. But yeah, these are all just for the professors. I'll go with the important stuff. I think this right here is important. Basically, have the students only talk uh, on, if they want to, so they can unmute their mic and talk. But yeah, I think that's pretty important to have. Uh, just this stuff right here is so that students can talk with each other and all, probably. And uh, oh, this right here. So um, if you're a professor that likes to like have these insta insta polls or square cap, where you like you basically just um, send out these questions to the entire class, and you basically try to see who's actually there, so you can like take a um, a participation grade or whatever. This uh, allows you to do that. And this right here is just for people screen sharing stuff. And go through all the stuff, see what you want. So now let's actually go into like downloading the software. So for me, what I did to download was that I just clicked host a meeting and clicked any one of these. Just click this. 
And uh, so since I already downloaded it, I'm able to just open it. But if you don't have it downloaded beforehand, you'll just have to download it and then I'll come up with the exact same uh, things I have here. So for me, I'm just going to click with this. Doesn't really matter. Let's just make this full screen. Doesn't really matter. And so if you want to mute, you just click the, this thing right here. It allows you to mute. And um, it should only be muted on Zoom, not the actual software I'm using to record this. But this will allow you to mute that so that way the class doesn't hear you or the students don't hear you. This right here is a video. So it was a setting that I had. So normally my setting is to have the video on. But uh, since I clicked the uh, link, let me just show you. Since I clicked host a meeting with video off, that's why I just opened with the video off. But normally you just start off with something like this. So, yep. And uh, I do know that my webcam isn't good, but that's fine. Just ignore that. It doesn't really matter. So this right here is how you can manually invite people. You can go to the emails or type in contacts if you have them added in Zoom already. This right here is how you can, how you can see everyone who's already in there. So right now it's just me. And um, I'll text my friends to join. We'll see if they join in time. They probably won't, but it's all good. Actually, yeah, they don't need to join. It's fine. Um, I'm sure I can just show you the features without other people joining. So this right here is how you can share the screen. So if you click this little arrow, you can have multiple people share the screen at once. Or you can just have it where one person shares at a time. So if you have one person, it will take up the entire screen, like this entire thing right here. If you have multiple people, it'll show it'll be like sectioned off a little bit. But yeah, that's that. So if I were to share my screen, I can pick something specific. So I can click this web page, share it. And this is what I was working this is what I was showing you guys before. But for professors, you can like show a specific thing or a specific website or a video or whatever. It doesn't really matter. So let's just stop it. Now let's go to chat. So this is how um you can talk to everyone and everyone can talk to you. It's pretty important and uh, there's something else I wanted to show all oh, right here <clears throat> so this is particularly important for the uh, professors and the students so this is how so these four options down here is or five options I should say are how the students can pro communicate with the professor so like um, the student wants to just, like respond to professor's question by saying yes or no yeah these two options and this is just general feedback for the professor to go slower, go faster, all that good stuff. But yeah, and the chat is just um, where you can be like, hello class, and everyone can see it. Or if there's other people in there, you'll have different things in this drop down menu. So you can like communicate with someone specifically. Or if you just want to like uh, message someone in class, like to clarify one thing and you don't feel like it's necessary to bother the professor you can and you can send files so like if a professor wanted to like send the homework they can send it through this uh, chat right here but yeah that's the chat and this record is actually pretty useful I think it's uh, so with this record you're able to basically record the entire lecture and you can save it to your computer or to the zoom cloud and then in order to access this you have to go to the actual zoom website but uh, let's just do record on this computer and so right now it's basically recording the screen. It's probably like a black screen, so let's just uh, show some video. Stop it. And now I'll stop the recording. So there's two sides to it. I'll click stop. <coughs> and so basically this uh, file will only be saved once uh, you end the meeting. And we're almost there, so I'll show you. I'll show you that's that as well. And so closed caption, you're probably not going to need this unless you have some um, deaf people in class. And then if you do have that, you either need someone to type this, what you're saying, or you need to have a third party API. So, yeah. And finally, breakout rooms. It's a pretty neat feature. It's essentially where um, you can um, basically split the classrooms into groups. So let's say like you wanted uh, the, to split the classroom and have them discuss a certain thing. You can automatically do it or manually do it yourself. And you can, and so since there's no one else, it's zero participants. But if you have like a class of 100, there's a class of 100, assign 100 participants into, let's say, 10 rooms. And it'll do it for you automatically if you had this option on. And you click create rooms and it'll automatically do it. And you have the option to uh, basically end the breakout rooms. 
So that's basically all the features here, plus unsmeeting. Went ahead and saved all the stuff right here. So if you were to click the zoom option, it shows you the video. And so, as you saw here, it was a black screen whenever the screen wasn't shared. And as soon as I started sharing it, it had the what it was on the screen. And yeah, that's that. Let's exit out of that, exit out of this. And so now what I want to show you is uh, this is the actual application itself. So this is uh, particularly important if you just don't want to use the website. You can use this to create a new meeting, join a meeting, schedule a meeting. This is the exact same thing as a website. So yeah, something to note. And yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. I'll definitely do my best to answer it. But uh, yeah, hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks.